Okay, it's the lunchtime video. Um, I'm Neil Atkinson, this is Gareth Roberts, we've done this before. Uh, massive news from last night. Well, I've had my hair cut. And it's important that basically one of the key ways currently wearing I feel is the way I uh, communicate with my mother is through this video. So I'd just like to point out to her that I've had my hair cut uh, and that's that bit boxed. It's, um, neat, it's neater, isn't it, Mrs. Atkinson? It looks a lot better. Uh, I haven't got a dentist appointment sorted yet, Mum, but I will do soon, promise. Um, and I hope there's some news on the uh, on, on the appointments at the hospital for my eyes, but we'll, you know, maybe, maybe we'll catch up over the weekend. Uh, Liverpool. Um, <laughs> Liverpool. Um, I mean, it's, you can say it's another perfect Euro European away performance. I think it's a funny thing, John putting his ratings about, you know, nil nil away from home in Europe's never a bad result. But it does feel like times are a little bit different. But I think what sort of frustrates me about last night is I don't think we did enough of one or the other. Mm. I don't think we did enough, obviously, because we conceded the sort of it goal we conceded later on. It wasn't a complete low block, is what you mean. It yeah. wasn't like we just went there and went, right, we're seeing this out and getting the nil. It, at times, they looked quite attacking, but almost didn't c commit enough. So being quite attacking, yeah. and, and then and not least with the manager's substitutions, where he himself doesn't bring storage on. You know, it felt to me like it's we weren't quite all of one thing or all of the other, and I don't care what we, what we are. I'd just like, to, like us to fully commit to it. Yeah. I mean, maybe, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm wrong, and maybe I'm asking too much, and maybe there's got to be more subtlety in football, but I just sort of felt and I certainly think at 90 you maybe just put 10 men behind the ball and go we'll just, we'll, we'll just see you later now lads yeah that, that felt like a bit of a nouse issue didn't it I mean everyone's highlighted the fa how, how far forward Moreno is um, I mean yeah I think you're right in that it, it did feel like the manager got a little bit caught between two stools I wonder how, how much the Coutinho issue influenced that I mean he, he's gone off sick hasn't he which you know obviously no one can foresee uh, even then though to bring on Ibe's quite a strange substitution I thought in, in terms of Ives had a terrible season basically you know he looked shot of confidence he's not done anything in recent times to, su to suggest he should be coming on in a European semi-final and yet there he was and, and if you'd have got if you if you'd have got to worry around Moreno in general uh, I wouldn't put Jordan Ives in front of him no exactly and um, and also as well I mean I think you know in, in terms of the committing thing as well I mean I think everyone could see that Klein was getting an awful lot of space you know getting Joy down down there left and, and it didn't feel like we capitalised on that either. It didn't feel like anyone's gone. You know, you, what you see teams do all the time, but what you've seen teams do to Albi Murray, you know, to be fair, where they go, he's a bit of a weak spot there. We can get at them that way. It felt like Klein was going, I'm getting after me, lads, but, you know, there's no one for me. There's, so, no, yeah. there's no one in the box. I mean, we seem to put quite a, a lot of crosses in, didn't we? Which was like crosses into no one. Two, two, yeah, exactly. To two. No one. And, and, you know, you got Ben Sake kicking around. He comes on far too late to, to have any kind of influence on the game. But well, the manager said he was just bringing them on from, from their I was just going to say, I thought... To, I, to cover their set pieces. I thought that was mad because, I mean, everyone goes, OK, there finally is the striker. And then you hear the manager speak in the, in the press conference afterwards and he basically said, I didn't bring them on to attack. So it seemed like to me that he was basically saying in that interview that the idea was to completely defend and just get the nil nil. Um, but it didn't seem. I, I, I don't know. Has something gone wrong? Well, maybe, they, 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 maybe, they've the just team? Sucked, maybe they've sucked us up because that's one of the things mm. they're looking to do. They're looking to get you to do what you don't want to do. They're looking to suck you up. You can see why they are where they are in Spain in terms of the fact that they're not an exciting, thrilling football they're team. They're organised. They're organised. They're really well organised. They're solid. They're, they're clearly good players. There's nothing to be scared of. No. They're not. You know, it's not like dealing Absolutely with. Not. They're not to be scared of. But you can imagine how they're going to score at Anfield. It doesn't take much to imagine how they score at Anfield if we're all honest about it. And um, I, I think that in general we suddenly looked. We looked like we had too many blows. I was speaking to someone this morning, he said it feels as though Liverpool we've had too many blows and you look down in the middle of the pitch and all of a sudden, you know, I thought Lovren played well. I thought Colo does really well, but mm. he just lacks a bit of pace. And I think that looking right the way through the spine of the pitch, I thought we looked short of pace. No Origi, short of pace. Yeah. Um, and we've chosen not to start storage. Um no no Henderson pace in the middle of the park, no Emery Chan, pace in the middle of the park, and, uh, and, and as I say, no Sacco, and it's not that Sacco was lightning, but he's quicker than Torre, yeah. and we just looked, we lo I thought we looked like we just didn't have that next gear, and well, once, maybe that's once, they the were, once, the, once they were away for that goal, you knew it was it was a goal, basically, mm. didn't you, a long time before it actually went in the back of the net, and I think, you know, Torre's just gone there, he, yeah. he, he's basically like, lads, you, you know I haven't got pace to yeah. get across there, so you know, what do you want the, me to do? And it's the 91st minute. And it's the 91st minute, and, and I've been toiling away. 35, mate. <laughs> 35. Um, I think I think you're right though to say I, I think I think the big thing I'd take from it is 
even at one nil, I'm not I'm not disheartened. I'm, I'm disappointed in the way the results gone, but I don't feel it's it's something we can't turn over no, at Anfield. It's I feel like we'll, you'll get chances. Though, but it's going to take a lot of game management at Anfield because you know, for instance, there's nothing wrong at Anfield if it's still nil nil with half an hour to go, because one goal forces extra time. Two obviously gets us the results, but I think it's going to take a lot of game management at Anfield. Mm. I don't think it's as straightforward as, for instance, nil nil would have been where you just almost have to acknowledge, well, we just win the game. Mm. That's that that luxury is now gone, and that's the frustration. And I can understand why the manager, what you know. Would have took nil nil, and I, but I also think it's worth pointing out they'd sort of took nil nil, and I think yeah. it's important to say that they're confident enough that they'll score at Anfield that they themselves had got to eighty five and thought, you know what, nil nil's all right here for us. You know the uh, you know the little psychological moments that we, which I always like to highlight. You know uh, the way f- let's take Istanbul for an example. The way everyone talks about you know uh, AC Milan players touching the cup and, yeah. and, and celebrating a bit too much at our time and all that. They went nuts over that goal. What were yeah. they doing? The yeah. old stadium's up. The manager's going absolutely nuts. All kinds of fist pumps and everything. I'm, I'm certain that that video is going to be played back to the, to the lads there, and they're going to go, "Look at these fellas. They think they've got it won." We'll play it back to Robbo. Uh, play it back to me. Yeah, I'll be singing. Uh, here we go for it. Listen, uh, thank you very much for this week. Today there's going to be a Friday show, which is going to double up a City Talk. It's complicated. You don't need to worry. We've got it boxed. Uh, there's also going to be an AFQ. Uh, that's uh, that's getting done as well. I'll be asking for your questions on that one at about sort of quarter to five-ish. Um, and all the usual stuff. There's the shows from last night. And also at noon, uh, we've got an exclusive, fantastic interview with Paco Astro, uh, done by John Gibbons and Andy Heaton, which we're really, really excited about. We've had a listen to it. It's the absolute business, to be honest with you. They recorded it in a dressing room, uh, with a changing room, which is uh, which is Paco's natural environment. That's why they chose to do it there. Uh, it's half an hour long. If you don't subscribe, please have a think about doing so. Quite serious about this. It's the absolute business. It's an absolutely fascinating insight into coaching in many different countries. Plus, obviously, his time at Liverpool. Uh, well, in the lads, well done everybody for that. Uh, made up, and thanks to Paco as well for doing it. Uh, this is the Anfield wrap. For this is the last time we get to look at you. We don't. We look lovely. I've had a haircut. Robert's come back from holiday. But go and have a lovely, lovely weekend and enjoy the hailstones.